It's been a tough couple of weeks for the digital news industry. More than a thousand workers, many of them reporters, have lost their jobs at companies like BuzzFeed, HuffPost, and Vice. Just five years ago, these digital news outlets were seen as the future of journalism. However, the layoffs suggest that the business model the companies all rely on, click-based advertising revenue, just doesn't add up to a profitable bottom line. Then there's the problematic reliance on Facebook and Google to distribute digital news content. The two tech giants are eating up the bulk of digital ad revenues, leaving the buzz feeds of the world in roughly the same place as newspapers and other legacy news organizations before them, trying to find new models to make their businesses work. Sound familiar? That's because it is. Our starting point this week is BuzzFeed's headquarters in New York City. We're accustomed, I think, to traditional media companies losing people. We're accustomed to newspapers laying people off. But people expected that BuzzFeed and Vice and other digital companies were the future of digital media. There was an impression in some circles that these companies really figured out the future of digital news. One million subscribers on our Vice YouTube channel. We wanted to take you in, show you around on how we hit that million. This spate of layoffs have confronted us with the fact that while they are different from legacy publishers, they're perhaps not so different as we had imagined. On the second million, I'll do the whole tour naked. So now the question is, how do we find a way forward? The digital natives are growing restless. The BuzzFeed layoffs amount to more than 200 jobs. The company's revenue formula, using gossipy clickbait and lightweight listicles to drive traffic to the news side, was considered a model. Now its entire national security reporting team has been laid off, as well as parts of the national news desk. Another 250 jobs will disappear at Vice, a media company that traded on its understanding of the millennial market. It's now leaning away from news and focusing on its more lucrative divisions, such as film and television production. It's an industry-wide contraction that feels like a correction and amounts to an admission that for all their indie sass and swagger. In this episode, we go to Liberia and hang out with cannibal warlords. The buzz feeds and vices of the news world are as dependent on the tech giants as a child is on its parents. Hipster cred will only get you so far. They need Facebook and Google to survive. It's about the role that Google and Facebook have played in delivering audiences to publishers. Um, they both have algorithms that they are constantly changing without warning, and publishers will see their traffic tank overnight without any ability to respond to it. The problem is that when you rely on Facebook as your distribution mechanism, when Facebook changes, you really are at their mercy. The idea, and it seemed sound at the time, was let's maximize our strategies, our editorial strategies and advertising strategies to appeal to younger viewers slash readers and do it primarily on Facebook. But as Facebook decided to change how it operates, it has abandoned news in general. And it has hurt these companies that had built up their business practices to pander to Facebook. Even when news outlets clear the algorithmic hurdles and find you, there's the issue of how the tech giants cut up the cash, the ad revenues. Take Facebook. Before getting to a news article, you scroll through your news feed and the first wave of ads placed by Facebook. You'll eventually reach the article and the news outlets ad, but advertisers value that ad less than the ones Facebook has posted because Facebook ads are more effectively targeted. The platform knows more about you, your interests and buying habits than the news outlet ever will. That's how more than 80% of news-related ad revenues end up in the pockets of the gatekeepers, Facebook and Google. There are billions of people out there. If you could get X number to click on something, you could get advertisers to pay X per click. Theoretically, if you accumulate enough volume, you can make money and we know that that's possible because Google makes money and Facebook makes money. The problem is there is no way for a media company to achieve that kind of scale. Google and Facebook take up the vast majority of digital advertising and so there's very little left for media companies and the amount of money that they're making from it is actually declining. So you have to chase, you have to run faster and faster just to stay in the same place. 
right, it's clear that the reliance on advertising alone is a, uh, is a problem for the industry. So it's a question of whether the publishing industry as a whole can find other sources of revenue to make up for some of the advertising that is flowing away from news and increasingly going to companies like Facebook and Google. The other revenue source that will likely dry up is from mainstream media organizations that have invested in their younger digital competitors. NBC Universal and Comcast have injected more than $400 million into BuzzFeed. Fox, Disney, and A&E Networks have pumped hundreds of millions into Vice. Verizon has long been vacuuming up media content providers such as Yahoo, AOL, and by extension HuffPost in multi-billion dollar deals. There may have once been a rationale for such investments, but those mainstream media companies are now counting their losses, in some cases writing them off, and looking to invest elsewhere. All those investments came from these big media companies who made most of their money in television. And pay television was just going off a cliff, being eaten by Netflix. They were seeing their most lucrative parts of their business declining, so they were desperate to reach these hard to reach young people in their 20s and early 30s. And Vice and BuzzFeed, they offered a way to reach these young audiences. And now it's unlikely that they're going to continue that investment just because of the difficulties in the online advertising market. Who exactly is going to be provide the funding for these companies as they go forward. Venture capital investors don't just give you hundreds of millions of dollars for nothing. They're going to expect that money back. It's going to have to come from somewhere because the revenue model is now in question. Not only are we questioning the growth rates of these companies, we're questioning sort of whether they can even continue to be the same size. So now you've got something that's not even growing. It's probably shrinking. That's not a business model that anybody is going to be interested in investing in. One model that is working in a limited way is the old-fashioned subscription model that so many news organizations have abandoned. The same week that BuzzFeed, Vice and HuffPost were shedding staff, the New York Times announced it now employs 1,600 journalists, the most in its history, and that it ended 2018 with a record 3.3 million digital subscribers, a 27% increase over the previous year. Having convinced many Americans that their journalism is worth supporting, papers like The Times and The Washington Post are thriving, the indirect beneficiaries of President Trump's attacks on the U.S. news media. However, very few news outlets have the name recognition, the prestige of The Times or The Post, and the digital newbies have gone all in on the digital advertising model for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer. You see from the amazing performance of the New York Times Company, they've been able to create a good digital subscription model that is funding their newsroom. So there is hope if you're a big brand and you can get people to pay subscriptions, but if you're relying on advertising only, I think there's very, very little evidence it can work. I don't think all hope is lost, but it does mean that we must confront the two dragons. Facebook and Google. If we fail to confront Facebook and Google and their terrifying ability to distort journalism, to corrupt journalism, and to crush journalism, then we are in trouble. We have to break up those large companies to make sure that they are not so powerful, not so dominant. Those are fairly big tasks, but they're not impossible.